I realize Prime Video never has nearly as many movies as Netflix and their original content is never as good as Netflix, but they do do one thing better than Netflix and that is have new release movies. Netflix only ever seems to have a small handful of new release movies that are not Netflix originals. Whereas Prime Video right now, I have 15 on this list that are all brand new releases that are well worth talking about. This video is sponsored by Scentbird, but I'll tell you more about them later in the video. Right now, I wanna jump into my number 15 pick, which was a big hit in the movie theaters last summer, the Black Phone. Now this is from the same director of Sinister, which also starred Ethan Hawke. And if you were a fan of that movie, then there's a lot to love with The Black Phone. It's dark, it's creepy. Ethan Hawke's character in this movie is fantastic and it's way out of bounds of what he normally does. And there's some interesting elements with the storytelling, but that's about where it stops. I did feel like this was gonna deliver something much deeper and more interesting. It didn't, but as it stands, it was a pretty cool horror flick release last year that's worth checking out on Prime Video, but it is at the bottom of this list of 15. Now, believe it or not, the latest James Bond movie, No Time to Die, Yes, it's included with Prime, it has been for a while, but it's my number 14 pick on this list. That's how strong the other recommendations are and how much I kind of disliked this movie. Now, I'm a longtime fan of James Bond movies. I have my favorite picks from every guy that has played Bond over the years. And Daniel Craig is in two of my absolute favorite Bond movies ever, but I felt like this was a bit of a misfire. It's glossy, it's a beautiful movie. It has some standout moments in it, but I didn't feel like it was glued together very well and ultimately didn't like how they ended the Daniel Craig Bond saga. That said though, it is pretty cool that this is still included with Prime video and I'm surprised this isn't one that Netflix scooped up. Now there is not a lot of horror on this list but my next pick was another massive hit in the theaters this past year. In fact it broke all sorts of records. Terrifier 2 is an independent horror movie only released in a a large handful of theaters, but it was a very limited release. And it was so popular, not only did it stay in theaters for weeks longer than anticipated, it really kind of made it into the pop culture zeitgeist this past year. I've recommended the first one multiple times. It bounces around on streaming, but Terrifier 2 is on Prime Video and is kind of the ultimate slasher movie. Anyone who is a fan of the genre, anyone who's a big fan has probably seen this more than once. If you do not like slasher movies, particularly B-level horror movies, Terrifier is not going to be the franchise for you. However, if you do like slasher movies with a ton of blood in them, then Terrifier is going to be right up your alley. Ticket to Paradise is a new release romantic comedy included with Prime, but I'm not recommending it mainly because it delivers exactly what you would expect if you watch the trailers. The performances are good, the locations are beautiful, but it's pretty standard fare for a rom-com. But there was a Prime Video original movie released last year that I know a lot of people missed called I Want You Back. This stars Charlie Day and Jenny Slate, and they are both fantastic in this movie. In fact, they are the reason I'm recommending it. This too has a basic setup. There are a couple of people who meet each other after going through really awful breakups, and they help each other to try to get their exes back. Feels very much like a sitcom-y kind of a scenario, and it is, but with the two of them at it, it is really funny and in kind of a subtle, natural way too. This is not a knee slapper, but they do get into plenty of funny situations. It's never over the top, yet it's sweet and heartwarming the way you'd want a romantic comedy to be. And even though I Want You Back goes into plenty of predictable directions, it still has enough interesting elements there to keep you entertained. I mean, honestly, I'm someone who does not enjoy this genre almost ever, and I found this to be a particularly enjoyable movie. Now, B.J. Novak, who's most famous for being one of the co-creators or main writers for The Office, actually wrote and directed a movie released during the pandemic titled Vengeance. So as like a personal boundary, I don't avenge deaths. He stars in this as the lead character in In Vengeance. He plays a journalist, or I think more specifically, it's actually a podcaster, but he travels from New York to Texas to investigate the death of not quite his girlfriend, but a girl he had some relations with, basically to create a news story and ends up kind of getting sucked into this bigger investigation. However, 
Vengeance is not really a neo-noir movie. It's not really about the investigation. There are certainly notes of that, but I feel like if you go into this movie expecting that, you're gonna be sorely disappointed. However, it does have some really interesting character development. Ashton Kutcher has a dynamite performance in this movie that I did not see coming. So the movie's worth watching really just for that, but you get a lot of other really great performances as well and some really endearing characters, even if the movie and the story overall isn't glued together as much as I would have hoped. Now, unless you plan on watching every single one of these movies by yourself, you may want to pay close attention to today's sponsor, Scentbird. And yes, even if you don't really use cologne, pay attention because Scentbird completely changed the way I view cologne. I used to be someone who just never wore it. I felt like I smelled good enough on my own, but the way that Scentbird delivers fragrances to you is unlike anything else. And that's because Scentbird is a subscription service that sends you new fragrances every month and they send them to you in these small vials. Now you'll get one of these when you sign up and then every month they'll send you a new little vial just like this one that actually has quite a bit of fragrance in it, especially for the price. You just load it back into this little case. I just sprayed on Confessions of a Rebel by Thirst Trap, which not only have I never seen this in a store, it's probably not something I would have liked the smell of in a store, which is what I love about Scentbird. I just didn't understand that perfumes and colognes smell different minutes after you put them on, meaning trying them on in a store just doesn't work. It's not what they're gonna smell like, plus you're surrounded by fragrances. I mean, it's nearly impossible to pick a good one out in a store. And I don't love everything I've received from Scentbird, but that's kind of the point. I get a chance to try them out and the ones I really like, like Versace Eros, one of the first things that they ever sent me. I liked it so much I bought the big one, mainly because it makes the misses go cross-eyed. I mean, if you go to the mall right now and try to buy a vial like this, not only would you not be able to find this one that I really like, but it's gonna be at least 30 bucks, probably a lot more depending on how designer the fragrance is. The thing that's so great about Scentbird is they let you choose from a new designer fragrance every month for just $17. And on top of that, if you use my link in the description and my code FLICK55, you'll get 55% off your first month. That's just over $7 for maybe your new favorite fragrance. And Scentbird doesn't just have indie labels like the one I showed you, they also have big name brands like Versace, Gucci, and Prada. And a big bottle from one of those companies can go for hundreds of dollars, making a $17 month supply a really fantastic deal. Again, just go to Scentbird.com, use my code FLICK55 to save 55% off. It's a great deal, but speaking of great stuff, let's get on with the list. They say laughter is the best medicine, and for just a flat-out comedy release last year, I thought The Lost City was really funny. Uh, the next time you toss a gun and you say, hey, Alan, catch! And then, you know, maybe do that before you throw it. Well, here is a synonym for catch. No, here is not a synonym for catch. Okay, in a colloquial kind of way, no, yes, no. it is. Now, even though this did come out in theaters, and even though it has some major stars in it, there's kind of a... A Netflix original feel to this movie. It feels like it's not quite a finished product, but what you do end up getting is a really hilarious action movie with Channing Tatum and Sandra Bullock. They're both fantastic in this movie. There's even a little cameo from Brad Pitt. And perhaps above all those, you've even got a maniacal role from Daniel Radcliffe in this movie that I think just sort of tipped this movie over the top for me, where I really enjoyed it. This is the type of movie, if you just want to turn your brain off and have a good, fun time watching a movie that you do not need to take seriously whatsoever, The Lost City is your ticket. However, on the opposite end of the spectrum, we've got Idris Elba in Beast. Now, this is one I have talked about recently, but it's a pretty wild new release movie. The setup here is extremely basic. Him and his two daughters get trapped inside a vehicle with a bloodthirsty lion outside. You've seen setups like this, not necessarily with lions, but it's basically Cujo in Africa, and it does have some really tense sequences that are really well executed, especially for something done at this budget level. I mean, the lion is CGI, and it's convincing enough for most of the movie. If you like anything about the basic concept here, or you're just a fan of Idris Elba, this is gonna be a great pick for you. And then Michael Bay finally returns to doing some real action last year with Ambulance. And what I mean by real action is most of his movies rely on heavy, heavy CGI. However, with Ambulance, most of what you're seeing is in camera. Yeah, I'm sure they use plenty of effects to enhance the shots, but 
It's real cars, it's real speed, it's old school car crashes, and I absolutely love it. The only real twist with Ambulance is that you're following a couple of people after a bank heist who are trying to make their escape in an ambulance. Yes, someone needs medical attention in the back of that ambulance, and it really sort of stirs the pot. Now, there's not a ton of story here. There's enough. In fact, there's plenty for a movie like this, but for the most part, you're just getting a fantastic heist sequence let off by Jake Gyllenhaal, who just plays a fantastic villain in this movie. He's done a villain a few times in a few different movies. This is my favorite villain I think he's done. If you don't count Nightcrawler as a villain, I guess. Otherwise, that would be my favorite. But another one, turn your brain off. If you just want to watch some wild stuff, Ambulance delivers. And it's in the hands of Michael Bay. I mean, say what you will about his movies, but the man knows how to film action better than most. And if that's not for you, you want something a little bit artsier but with just still some badassery in it, I highly recommend The Northman. Remember, for all you shed your last teardrop. I can feel now. Now this is from director Robert Eggers, who's most famous for The Witch and The Lighthouse, two exceedingly weird movies that are not for everybody. And while The Northman still kind of fits that bill, I think it's one of my favorites of his because it's really two things at once. It is an interesting, slow-paced art film that's got some really clever, artsy elements in it that I absolutely love, but it's also a straightforward Viking story. As such, it's a little more accessible than his other movies, and I think this one actually has a really nice balance. It feels kind of like a classic historical drama and kind of like an art film at the same time. Again, beautifully balanced out. If you like either of those elements, check out The Northman. And then Ben Affleck's latest turn in the director chair with Air. When you were selling sneakers out of the back of your Plymouth, that was risky. It took balls. I mean, that's why we're all here. Don't change that now. I mean, if you look at him, if you really look at Jordan, like I did, you're gonna see exactly what I see. This movie is still out in theaters around the country and you can check it out on Prime Video right now. If you don't know, Ben Affleck also directed movies like Argo and The Town. And Air is the story of how Nike recruited Michael Jordan to be one of their spokesmen and ultimately designing the Air Jordan, one of if not the most popular shoes in the history of the world, basically responsible for making Nike the gigantic company that it is today. But the movie is a fairly talky one. In fact, that's all this movie is. It's pretty much over the shoulder shots of two people talking. That's it. But it's in the hands of Matt Damon, Ben Affleck, Jason Bateman, Viola Davis, and Chris Tucker in the meatiest role he's taken in a while. In fact, he's really been doing cameos and staying away from the spotlight for what seems like forever now. And so it's really cool to see him not just taking a role, but taking a fairly serious one. Even though it's fairly short-lived in this movie, it was cool to see Chris Tucker back on the scene. And even though it's really just a chatty movie about business, it's incredibly compelling. You don't have to care anything about Michael Jordan or Nike or any of the people involved for this to be a really interesting, entertaining movie, which is why it gets this spot in the middle of a list of bangers, despite the fact that there's not a whole lot else going on in it. Director Guy Ritchie has been on a real tear lately with one in the theaters currently, one that just came out a few months ago, Operation Fortune, and one that came out a year before that, Wrath of Man. It is currently on Prime Video. Now this sort of sold itself as your run-of-the-mill Jason Statham action movie. He works for an armored car company and is basically chasing off robbers from these armored cars. Cool idea, again, sounds basically like a run-of-the-mill movie, and that element is in Wrath of Man. In fact, it starts off being a movie very much like that for the first 30 minutes or so, but then the movie takes a turn and it really does become a Guy Ritchie gangster movie. The guy knows that genre so well, and he really interwove a classic Guy Ritchie gangster movie that honestly has a harder edge than his movies usually have with a Jason Statham action flick, and it's a really cool idea. 
didn't end up being one of my favorite Guy Ritchie movies, but it's certainly one of my favorite Jason Statham action movies, which definitely says something. This is a cool flick. If you passed on it because you thought it was going to be some basic stuff, I'm telling you, there's a lot to love with this one. I've got another gangster movie up on this list, but this time we're going with some old school gangsters in The Outfit. Not only do we have old school gangsters, but we've got actor Mark Rylance delivering an incredible performance. Don't get me wrong, everybody else in this movie is fantastic, but it really is his movie and I love what he did with this one. In this movie, he plays a tailor who ends up having to doctor up some gangsters in his shop. And what you get is a pressure cooker situation that happens over the course of one night. In fact, the movie almost plays out in real time. And for a movie that takes place in one single solitary place, there are tons of twists and turns in this movie. I very recently recommended the 90s movie Bound here on the channel. It too is included with Prime Video, but if you like that movie, I think you're gonna love the outfit just as much, if not more. Believe it or not, my number three pick on this list is an Amazon Prime original movie titled 13 Lives. Now this is the true story of the boys that were trapped in that Thailand cave years ago. And there have been several things done with this. There was a Netflix movie, there was a Netflix documentary. I believe Disney even has one, but the one that Amazon produced is absolutely amazing because it was directed by Ron Howard, stars Viggo Mortensen, Colin Farrell, and Joel Edgerton, and was filmed for real. Now, obviously, they don't have the exact replica of the whole cave, but much of this movie takes place underwater, and much of it takes place in these confined spaces. You may recall Ron Howard directed Apollo 13, and 13 Lives feels just as realistic. It feels like it puts you in the moment. It's so intense. Such an amazing production with fantastic performances. Again, it's a harrowing story if you just hear about it, but then to see it brought to life in a really expert way like this is just really unparalleled. In terms of original movies hitting streaming services, this is easily one of the best I've ever seen. That includes anything I've ever seen on Netflix. I'm serious. But my top two picks on this list were far and away two of my absolute favorite movies released in the entirety of 2022. My number two pick being Jordan Peele's Nope. Now, the first time I saw it, I did enjoy this movie. I thought it was a really cool movie with an interesting concept regarding UFOs, and I liked it. I've liked all of his movies, but this one has grown on me over the past 12 months, and it's now easily my favorite, mainly because it has this sense of fun about it and plenty of serious themes as well. In fact, the movie opens up on a fairly serious note. But everyone's giving interesting, if not slightly unusual performances, particularly Steven Yen. He's not in the movie much, but when he is, it's just absolute dynamite. The look of the movie, so many of the visuals were just brand new things I'd never seen before. Concepts that are brand new I'd never thought of before, and the way Jordan Peele writes really appeals to me. I feel like I can piece together all the things he's trying to say with just a couple of viewings, and I find it really an interesting and fun movie-going experience. I'm so glad he's making movies. I mean, honestly, if you're the type of person that ever complains about there not being anything new coming out or that all movies are the same, movies like Nope are easily the exception to that rule. And then there's Top Gun Maverick. Now, ultimately the story here, I don't really care about that much. It's not bad, but this has much more in common with the Mission Impossible format, or at least the format that Mission Impossible movies have morphed into, and it works. There's time limits, there's pressure, there's all sorts of key elements that Tom Cruise has really developed in his movies at this point in his career and they're on full display in Top Gun Maverick, making this one of the most exciting movies I've ever seen in a movie theater, which is really saying something. I mean, I've seen almost everything, and Top Gun Maverick was such a breath of fresh air in a time where everything we see, at least in big budget movies like this, big budget action movies, they basically turned into animated movies because that technology has progressed so much. There's 
no need to really do things for real the way they do in Top Gun, but when they do, it makes all the difference in the world. I never would have expected this movie to be nearly as good as it was. If you haven't seen it yet, don't wait. Watch it on Prime Video before it's gone. But that is the list. The full list can be found in the top pinned comment as always. Thanks again to Scentbird for sponsoring another video. Go check out their link in the description or the top pinned comment. But I will keep making these videos as long as you keep watching them. Thanks for checking out this special Prime Video episode and you will see me on the next one.